Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear all. This is Zakirullah, lecture of medical laboratory technology. Today we will learn about the gross examination in the histopathology laboratory. The main objective points, the learning points of today's topic is the different principle uh, which is followed during the gross examination. What are the properties of a good gross examination? How the gross description is formatted? What is uh, the format or the formatting of the gross description? What are the different parts of the gross description and their formatting? So, introduction is the grossing and the gross examination. It is the examination and dissection of the excised or removed surgical specimen which we examine with the naked eye to obtain certain uh, diagnostic information and pathologic information. During the gross examination, uh, representative sections are prepared from the tissues which uh, required processing. So it is uh, the initial and the most important uh, step for obtaining accurate diagnosis in the histopathology laboratory. The gross room is the area where pathology specimen or surgically removed specimen are transferred and they are reviewed for pathologic investigation and reviewed for analysis as well as gross examination. The gross room serves as a bridge as a connection between the surgeon, the surgical unit and the diagnostic surgical pathologist for a correct diagnosis for proper diagnosis and treatment. The gross room uh, is usually it should be large and it should be well uh, lightened. It is well ventilated having exhaust fans and for uh, different containers the gross room have shelves where these containers are placed and also a formalin is uh, available in the gross room which have uh, easy access so if uh, any specimen required formalin or if the formalin is insufficient or if uh, the formalin need to be changed so uh, the formalin is easily available in the gross room along with all these uh, properties and all these uh, avail uh, facilities along with all these facilities a gross room have a very large table uh, for dissection of specimen along with this uh, table a sink is provided for water. The different general principle of grossing or gross examination. It is uh, the examination which provides a permanent record of all re relevant information uh, regarding the specimen what the type of the specimen, the size of the specimen and uh, the gross examination also include the information which is provided by the clinician along with the uh, specimen. The different surgical pro procedures which are performed during operating uh, the patient and removing the specimen, these information are also included in the uh, gross room and the gross examination. The description of the specimen as it was received either it was uh, received in a small container in a large container in a suitable container and either it was well labeled or not labeled and the size of the container and also all these description it is uh, uh, mentioned in the gross examination in the written in it and observation after dissection what was uh, received in the gross examination what was the first impression of the pathologist or the person who was performing the gross examination and what did he or she observed after he dissected the specimen. Nature of all the tissues which submitted for special studies or for research. So these are the record of all the relevant information along with the description of the microscopic sections taken what are the different uh, areas uh, which are further processed for microscopic examination and they will be 
examined under the microscope. The, the cross examination is very important to provide accurate and complete details and description and these are very important for the diagnosis of the uh, disease of the pathology is the gross examination it provides information about uh, the staging and prognosis of a disease the uh, if, if a cancer what is the stage what is the grade and what will be the prognosis the expected outcome of uh, this result of this disease gross examination also provide information about uh, the size of the tumor what, uh, and the size of the tumor and the distance from the margin either it has crossed the margin or it is inside the margin of the tissue or inside the margin of the organs or the number of uh, lymph nodes which are examined and the mets uh, are present in the lymph nodes gross examination also helps in the correlation and helps the pathologies correlating the microscopic finding with the gross finding that what was uh, what he was expecting in the gross and after gross examination when he processed the, the uh, reception when he processed the samples and when he processed the representative section of the tissue for microscopic examination so either both the gross examination and the microscopic examination they are correlating with each other or there is any different and also if there is an artifacts uh, of uh, ink uh, or any marker or if there is any dust particles or errors for example the sample they are swapped with each, uh, each other or it is uh, not correctly labeled or uh, the label has changed with each other so they can be easily detected by correlating the glass slides with the gross examination so gross examination also helps us removing the errors and artifacts in the uh, sample it also helps in the documentation of the specimen and the condition in which it was arrived and all these must be documented as uh, for example the sample was received in a container uh, which have uh, a suitable amount of formalin or the fixative and a, along with the sample there were certain other structures which were not mentioned in the request form because this is the only record for the specimen and it was received in the lead department the gross examination also helps in the saving record of the specimen as it was received in the department it also helps in the training of the pathologist or the uh, laboratory personnel because it reveals the strengths and limitation of the gross examination as compared to the microscopic examination if uh, certain things we missed in gross examination so after microscopic examination correlating the gross examination with microscopic examination we can uh, gain much more Uh, about the tissues and about the pathology also for some specimens such as colon carcinoma carcinoma the entire diagnosis can made grossly gross is a very good platform for a pathologist or lab technologist for a training because certain uh, specimens they are entirely diagnosis uh, with the help of the gross examination for example in case of colon carcinoma the colon carcinoma it is entirely diagnosed with the help of gross examination and this skill is a very important for um, consultants which are working in operating room during the uh, operation to fastly and rapidly select the tissue which is most likely to reveal the important diagnostic information so what should be the properties of a good gross examination what are the qualities which must be included inside 
the details of the gross examination so first thing is uh, that the gross examination it should be brief and precise in expressing uh, the information so important information it can usually be taken in few sentences and if uh, these details are very long or disorder are confused so the important information can be replaced or the irrelevant details they can hide our important information or that important information can be overlooked due to disordered or uh, long description a good gross examination should be very uh, precise and very brief because if it is imprecise or the details are very long and it is confused so the important information can be missed in between this long and disordered description so the gross description should be brief and precise and these details these should be good organized in case of writing uh, writing and in case of record keeping because information if is easily overlooked if it is not accessible easily accessible and if it is not placed in the right location so the good organization is important for a uh, gross examination and it is the quality of a gross examination that all the relevant information they should be easily available and easily accessible and in the right location the third property of a good gross examination is uh, the suitable dissection specimen can be described accurately if it completely if it is completely dissected and examined and the initial impression of certain species of certain uh, specimens they are changed after the detailed examination the proper dissection helps us finding the important information and the measurement of the specimen can also be recording recorded with the help of dissection and this dissection provide us a backup gross description for records in case we need to reprocess the sample so the dissection can help us finding the problem and we do not need to perform the dissection again if the sample is reprocessed so suitable dissection is important for all this information and standardization there is a standard there should be a standard for a gross examination and and its formatting the standardization of the grossing is also important for a good gross examination and good description as the most specimen they are dictated in the standard style because this standardization these minimize the risk of uh, overlooking or missing important information naive and creative dictations they should not be used uh, in uh, routine examination and routine processing but they should be kept for any complicated unusual and complex specimen the diagrams can be helpful uh, for the gross examination because it help us to make diagram of complicated specimen and these diagrams these shows us the site of the uh, representative section from where these sections are taken and we can also make the photocopy images or we can also take pictures of the gross specimen so these picture or these images can be helpful in the further processes it is helpful for the uh, good purposes how the gross examination and its description is formatted what is the formatting of the gross description there are six parts of the gross description number first is the documentation of the patient's name its bio data how the specimen is labeled whether it was received in a fresh uh, whether it was received in a 
fresh fixative and uh, what was the type of fixative any other anatomic structure any structures which are present in the specimen their weight their size and their measurements the second part of the gross description it describe us what was the main pathologic finding that caused the specimen to be resected to be surgically removed from the body for example the type of the lesion the size of the lesion relationship of the lesion with the normal structure and either this lesion has ma has crossed the margin of the tissue the margin of the or it was restricted within the margin of the tissue or within the margin of the organ the third part of describing and formatting the gross examination is uh, finding any secondary pathology which is not uh, not described in the first part for example uh, any incidental uh, polyps or any other smaller lesion which was not mentioned in the previous part or any diverticula etc so any other pathology which was found uh, and that was not mentioned in the second part so these should be also recorded and documented the fourth part of the gross description it contain any other normal structures that do not conveniently fit into the first sentence for example the length the diameter of ureters from the bladder resection the fifth part of the description and formatting it shows us that any frozen section any photograph any radiograph or any other studies that was done on the specimen and note that if the margin were inked or whether they were facing the front or they were uh, perpendicular so these should also be noted in the gross description and the last part of the gross description it shows us the list of all the microscopic uh, sections that were taken and that were further processed and for microscopic sections so make a list of all this microscopic section that was taken and that was that will be further processed